My name is Sara Vaezi. I'm the EVP and Chief Strategy and Digital Officer at Providence. A big issue that we've been facing at our health system and health systems across the country is what we call this notion of in-basket messaging. In-basket messages are essentially like a work queue for clinicians, for our doctors. And those messages have exploded over the last four years. Since 2020, the messages that we are receiving, that our care teams are receiving, um, has increased by over 60%, and they've increased by over 10% in just the last year alone. That amounts to 14 and a half million messages that are being generated for our clinical teams to address. And they can be a variety of things, messages generated by patients, messages generated by other doctors, and messages generated by, for instance, other partners like payers and lab. And so we decided that we needed to tackle the patient messaging piece because it really impacted our patients and their ability to get what they needed from us in a seamless, quick, and um, really real-time, personalized way. The reason why we decided to turn to AI to address the issue of in-basket management is that there's a huge element of understanding what the needs of a patient are when they are trying to send you a message. We call that intent recognition. Um, intent recognition can be done through natural language understanding, and with the advancements in large language models, we can actually understand intent at a very high level of accuracy, and we can understand complex intent. So not just something simple like, I want to book an appointment, but I want to book an appointment, and I need to refill my medication, and by the way, my knee hurts every time it rains. And so those complex needs that we're presented with, we can actually parse them out through this, these new advancements in large language models. We can then also combine that with dialogue flow, Q&A, RAG, all of these other things that the new, uh, more advanced AI models are presenting and making available to us to meet the needs of our patients at a level that was scientifically impossible a couple of years ago. The way that we implemented AI in addressing the in-basket problem was to um, initially deploy legacy or sort of conventional machine learning against understanding what our patients were saying to us when they came to us and input a message into the chatbot. As large language models became available, we um, were actually able to deploy large language models against this uh, comprehension layer that um, understood the needs of the patient and activated multiple intelligent agents that were um, being fulfilled through partners like those that could book appointments or do symptom checking. And, um, and we wrapped the whole thing with uh, large language model operations and um, machine learning operations that helped us, for instance, label data, um, check model performance both in runtime as well as auditing after the fact and ensure, for instance, that we were um, catching model drift early and intervening. We can even just shut off any AI um, if we notice that something is going wrong. We can shut it off and, um, and intervene and fix the performance and go back and um, turn it back on. The way that we address security concerns is frankly sort of best practice standards around ensuring that our um, systems are stateless. We're not sending data elsewhere, we're not hosting data, but we're operating within our own secure cloud environment and we're able to wrap all of um, all of the work that we're doing in AI with the right DevOps and the right security operations to make sure that we're not opening ourselves up to data poisoning, tampering with our models and we're not opening ourselves up to uh, the data being breached. The outcome of the work that we did with our chatbot and this um, patient self-serve mechanism was that we were actually able to reduce the number of administrative messages sent to our clinicians by up to 25%. 
And that meant that essentially folks were able to self-serve um, what they needed to get done. And when I say folks, I mean our patients, without having to bring a care team member into the process. So 25% of those messages that could have otherwise been sent were avoided. We call that message deflection. And when we say message deflection, each of those messages that were deflected saved the time of a doctor, a nurse, a medical assistant, or someone else in the clinic. We have over 100,000 monthly active users interacting with our chatbot and getting their needs met self-serve. We ultimately saw between 25 and 30% reduction in administrative messages that our patients were sending to our care teams. We also are starting to see overall messages that patients are sending to our clinicians decline by between eight and 10%. Every organization needs to evaluate their AI readiness. And before folks, before I would recommend folks just jumping in, I think that every organization needs to determine whether they can responsibly um, deploy AI either on a small scale or at a big scale. For instance, is there data in the cloud? Do they have computable data? Is it secure? Um, do they have the right um, buy-in from senior management, um, uh, folks across the organization, as well as board, man um, board level folks to do this in a way with organizational backing? And, um, and then do they have the right focus and um, frankly, uh, prioritization around what matters and how they want to start going down their AI journey, throwing stuff at the wall and dabbling in 50 different experiments around AI is not feasible in healthcare. And if that's where health systems are, I wouldn't recommend that they just jump in. What systems need to do is thoughtfully put in a process around governance, prioritization, and technical readiness so that they can embark on a deep learning process, not to use a pun, but a deep learning process um, around AI deployment in their organization. We've picked a handful of use cases and gone really deep, and that's what I would recommend others do as well.